personal capital free tool. Export data to Excel to make an income statement. Remove the cap on your capital by using personal capital free tool. Here we are in our personal capital practice problem. In prior presentations, we linked to the financial institution. We pulled in some practice data that we can then use in our practice problem. Now we're going to be putting that information, thinking about how we can compile it into, say, an income statement, which is not the area where personal capital typically shines. They shine with the balance sheet side of things and on typically the personal and or per business side of things. So including personal financial data. But can it be useful? Can we use this data to construct, say, a small income statement if we have something like gig work? Now, this is an area, an income statement for a business where something like a QuickBooks or other type of accounting software, which I've just jumped over to, will typically be using. But just note, in something like QuickBooks, you're typically then restricting or focusing solely on the business data, usually wanting to limit your checking account and, and expense accounts and your credit card accounts to that business data so that you can then use a full service accounting system, which you would certainly want to do, especially as the business grows. But if you just have some gig work, then it, it could be a little bit more difficult to pull this information out, or you may not you know, have the information broken out into a separate checking account. We have similar types of functionality to connect to a bank, but the QuickBooks using the double entry accounting system personal capital then over here not using the double entry accounting system therefore we can basically take the, the data from the bank and kind of carve out an income statement with it and that's what we're practicing doing now so in a prior presentation we went to the overviews up top we went to the transactions detail and then here we have all the transactions for all the accounts which is nice because that means that we can categorize them all together meaning if I have my accounts all mixed up between personal data, business data, and multiple checking accounts possibly, and multiple credit cards accounts for personal and business data, it's nice that we can pull them into one area and then try to categorize them all together in one area as opposed to possibly going in and then uh, taking the information from the bank directly from different checking accounts and different credit card accounts and then pulling them into Excel and categorizing them. No matter what we do, we're still going to have to categorize. Even if we use QuickBooks, we'll still have to go through the categorization process. Here we have categories and tags. We use the categories to then categorize the accounts that we want to go to and then the tags to, to differentiate business versus personal type of information. Once we have this information done and the transactions uh, detail, we can kind of export it to Excel this time, and then it's pretty easy to then sort this into an income statement. Note this is different than if I went over the, here to QuickBooks, what would happen if I enter these transactions into the transaction detail. This is data that came from the bank. We would then have to confirm every transaction. I couldn't basically say that this is a balance sheet transaction and I want to in ignore it as easily because every transaction that comes from the bank, we need to assign to either balance sheet or income statement accounts. So in that sense, you need a little bit more understanding or knowledge of balance sheet and income statement type of accounts so that you can assign them. However, once you have assigned them here, you can memorize the transactions and create bank rules, which then make it a lot easier to go forward. Personal capital, as we saw, didn't, didn't memorize the transactions as well here at all. And they might memorize the transactions a little bit more as you go forward, but you don't have that bank rule kind of capacity. In other words, once we set up the categories and tags, when we download more data in the future, hopefully they then pick up the same category at least and or tags so that we don't have to go through the whole process again. But no matter what you do, you're going to have to at least go through that process once and categorize everything out. You have to understand how to do that in no matter what software you're using. Also, just remember that if you've never used personal capital and you're trying to pull in an entire year or two years worth of data into the system, you might have a problem. It might not go that far back. And uh, under that situation, you can either download the data from the bank um, or you can use basically an Excel template called Money in Excel. And so if you just want to put together an income statement, you can go into Money in Excel and try to do the similar kind of process. We have courses on that as well. And that allows you to pull more data in uh, at one time, I might be able to start today and pull like two to three years worth of data in. Whereas this, if I was using it for the entire year, I would of course have the data in there. But if I wanted to pick up two years or three years back of data and just start, 
then you can't really do that so much here. Uh, in QuickBooks, you can't, you may have limitations to connect directly to a bank or another kind of accounting software in terms of how far back you could go, but you can typically download data from the financial institution and upload it into QuickBooks to kind of shore up that problem. So you can possibly do a full year's worth of data or go a couple of years back if your financial institution allows you to do so uh, by importing the data into something like QuickBooks. So just keep that limitation in mind. Now we've gone through, we've categorized all this information. I'm gonna go ahead and close this tab to the left-hand side. And we've done so in this transactions detail so that we can make sure that we have categorized them uh, between the balance sheet and non-balance sheet items, transfers and balance sheet items. Once that's done, we can then kind of limit this information a little bit more by going to the, to the um, banking and cash flow. By going here, I'm looking at the data now that has already been categorized and this will kind of eliminate already some of the balance sheet data. So if you've properly categorized everything and eliminated the balance sheet data, this might be a little bit easier than to, to transport to Excel and then, and then adjust it in Excel. If you haven't properly categorized these two, then you don't want to do that because you want to, you, because if you didn't uh, record the transfers properly, then they're not going to show up here. In other words, if you had something as income and it was recorded as a transfer category, then it's not going to pull into this section because this section only includes income and expense items. You need to go back to the overview and transactions and then record it properly as income as opposed to a transaction. If it is income, it'll show up here. So now that we've kind of done that, I can go here and just export this data, which will trim it down a little bit for me already since again, I don't, I'm not looking for the balance sheet. I'm not creating a balance sheet from this as we would do in like a QuickBooks. I'm only creating an income statement. The balance sheet in this software has been done for us because we're just relying on the financial institution to do that. So that way I could just delete everything I don't want <laughs> really to make an income statement. Not having the double entry accounting system in that way to double check us, but uh, it's, you know, fairly quick, easy way to do this. So before we export it, I'm going to change the date range. I'll bring this back to January. Let's do just January through, through, uh, March. Obviously, if you had a whole year's worth of data from, from like 2020, if you had all the data in there, then you could do a year's worth of data. So we'll just work with, with this just to practice with. And then I'm going to go to a CSV. So it's going to download as a CSV file, which if you have Excel will be opened in Excel, but you want to note that it is a CSV file. So if I open this up, then it's going to look like an Excel file, but it's going to be very plain because it doesn't have all the cool formatting that Excel has. What you do not want to do is then try to format this in Excel because you typically can format it in Excel, but it won't save it as a CSV file. It might erase the formatting. So you want to make sure to save it as an Excel file. I'll do that here. I'll save it first as a CSV file and then as an Excel file. So I'll go save as, browse. We're going to put it on our desktop. So I'm going to put a folder on the desktop here called, uh, what did we call it? We called it the personal capital folder. And then it says CSV. So I, I, I'm later, I'm going to change this to an Excel file, but right now I'm just going to keep it as a CSV so we can compare and contrast what they look like just as a file. So I'll save that. And then I'm going to do it. Well, this, let's do this again. Personal capital CSV file. So I'll save it like that. And then I'm going to save it again, file tab and save it again, but this time as an Excel file. So it's personal capital. This is Excel. And the way you change it is you just hit this drop down where it says save as and change it to an Excel workbook, which should be the top one because we opened it in Excel. So that would be the top one. And so then I'm going to say save it. And there it is. So if I close this out, then closing this out and then go into my, my folder over here. So there we have the two. Here's the CSV file. Looks similar, a little bit slightly different icon. If I was to right click on it and go to properties, then you could, you could see here it's a CSV file. So what you want to do then is be working with the one in Excel. Otherwise, it might not save your changes in the CSV file. So if I open up then Excel, we then have our data in a nice kind of basic format. So the first thing I'll do is I'll, I'll put my, my cursor on column A and drag on over to column F. And I just want to widen the cell so I can see everything. And then I'll put my cursor between one of the two cells like A and B or B and C till it looks like that. Not like that, but like that. And then double click on it. 
and that'll that'll open up the cells wide enough so that you could see everything in the cells so now that we have this information we can categorize this information and it's it's a lot easier than you would think if we have the proper categories basically account categories here and we have the tags to help us do this multiple ways we could do it now we could use a table to do it we could just sort the data and you know and add it up or we can use a pivot table which sounds intimidating but it's pretty easy to use a pivot table if we have all this stuff set up it's you know we just click a couple buttons that way and, and it'll it'll put it all together which is nice so we'll practice with that in future presentations